things to be aware of organizing e-racing championship without race room. First, no automated leaderboard would always be labor-intensive. Elimination round would be the only way to filter the winners, having the participants adhering to the schedule would be a huge test. We need to know the task will get bigger when participants increases. Time consuming. Organizing e-racing championship without race room, it's all need run manually to take and down the participants and eliminate them from first round group to final round group. Because it is manual human labor. They're bound to be human error. Manual human labor would have a price tag for the man hours involved. New participants would never have chance. The e-racing clubs in the world will send their best racers to participate the race. But that means your championship exposure is just limited to the e-racing clubs. Why choose race room? Our 3 e official championship have fully automated leaderboard. Participants can log in anytime to leave the fastest lap time within the qualifying period. Each of the racers already have their ranks with race room. Next, save time. You can have unlimited amounts of participants in a super short time to qualifying them to final race. Race room can cover unlimited amount of participants. We have a full automated esports ecosystem from qualifying leaderboard to broadcast AI. Besides, race room's free contents lets everyone can participant to the race. E-Racing Grand Prix coming your way on your various streaming mechanisms. We have got four races going on today, round two of the American Championship Global Edition. We've just seen the Copper, the supposed amateurs, put together a really good performance, a very disciplined performance in the race that we've just seen. So hopefully the bronze uh, category guys can Follow that lead, Alex Young. Well, in your book, yes, in mine, I want far more contact, please. <laughs> you love that contact, don't you? And there will be contact. This is mid-Ohio, and mid-Ohio is a very, very difficult track. Um, we are on the bronze guys now, and they're driving Tatus Formula 4 cars, which are really, pro they're proper single-seaters. They're normally seen as the first rank, first Formula series you do after go-karting. Um, and we saw a great race at Road, Atlant uh, Road America uh, in round one, um, and I think we're going to get a great race here today as well. Before we go to practice, you've mentioned the circuit mid-Ohio and uh, we've mentioned the fact we're going to go up to the Gold Class who are racing Indy cars. I think it's a good chance to have a look at the circuit because it is brand new to me and you yourself have said that you've, you've not driven there. It must be one of the few tracks in the world. <laughs> so let's have a, a flying lap with Miko Nassi around the mid-Ohio circuit. Welcome to the mid-Ohio sports car course. I'll take you for a lap around here in the Indy car. Just getting a nice wide start to our lap. And we're at the start finish straight here. And coming up to almost full th throttle left hand corner. Maybe on uh, qualifying fuel and these softer alternate tires, it is full throttle. And then we're coming up to a hairpin, the keyhole. And super important to get a good exit here for the long back straight. Really patient getting onto the throttle. And you notice that's going to be a theme here. Throttle patience. There's lots of. Elevation change, lots of crests, 
that you have to go through and uh, try to accelerate out of. And just through the kink there, and a really fast right hand corner coming up here, third gear. Staying close to the left edge, there's no point going right across the track, you don't benefit from it. And then a very tricky series of S's here, where you can easily lose the back end. And lost the apex there a little bit, and another really difficult acceler acceleration zone. Super tough to get enough power down. And a really quick left-hand corner, and we're coming up to the final sector. The carousel here. Almost lost the car. You end up in the pit lane there if you uh, overcook it a bit more than I did. And then we're done with the lap. That's the 2.4-mile Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, which has been used since the 1960s. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the race. Thank you very much, Miko Nasi. I tell you what, he's a natural in delivery. We'll get him into the commentary box one time, but we want him racing, so don't go chasing him too eagerly, yeah. Alex. Uh, right, we're talking about the uh, bronze edition, and uh, we've had one race already so far this season, and it was a real success for Hong Kong's Felix Jung, who took the victory, but Voltes Seiko, a Filipino who we've seen in the Philippines Championship, pushed him all the way. Let's have a look at the results from round one last week. Any surprises for you there, Alex? Uh, one or two young drivers, but names yep. we generally know, huh? Yeah, I mean, Henry was super consistent. Axel also had some consistency. We've seen Axel be quick before, but he's a bit up and down, but it's good to see him get to 14th. Um, Nazir Azman, he was really quick as well, but he got into a few a bit of argy-bargy, so he, he wasn't up as uh, high as he should have been. Gav Quintos, we know how quick that driver is. Okay, the guys are out on the circuit at the moment. Uh, we've joined them just a little bit early. They've got yeah. about nine minutes or so. Let's have a look at Felix Jung, see how he's handling this uh, this new venue. Single-seater cars, of course, which is a, a new challenge from season two where they're in the open wheel, but now it's single-seater. And it's, it's a completely different challenge and a different drive mm -hmm. for the drivers. Yeah, so, I mean, in the previous two editions, Global Edition 1 and Global Edition 2, we were doing um, GT3 cars, GT4 cars, um, Indy cars... Uh, touring cars, which are all a bit heavier, um, not as much downforce, so you have to drive them a certain way. You, you can't just dart around. You got to really wait for the weight to move around the car, around the axis. Um, you have to be a bit more patient. Single seaters, you can be a lot faster uh, with the car. In a way, it's easier to drive because it has so much more grip. Um, but you can't have any bad habits of single seaters. You have to be very smooth. You have to load up the car nicely. Um, and, and that's why I, I like doing single seaters at this stage because um, you know you can get away with a couple bad habits in some of the bigger heavier cars but you can't in a single seater. One of the other additions that you've introduced to the broadcast is we've got onboard cameras, live onboard cameras via Zoom for several of them. It, it may be worth having a little look to see how they're taking this practice at, just at the moment Alex. Do you want to pick uh, one yeah. of your selections? Yeah well I tell you what let's uh, try and put on a Zero Sumo de Vila. Um, well, he's not driving at the moment, so, but, um, yeah, well, let's look at Francis Angelo Gonzalez, maybe. Uh, oh, no, that's, well, they're all not driving at the moment, but there's some of the ones that are driving. Uh, we'll pick one, and we'll stick him on in a sec. Um, but, yeah, some of the drivers are... are, are I put you in a tough position there. Apologies, yeah, I didn't put me mean in a tough to position. That. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll do it. Um, yeah, so let's get Zero Summa de Bieler on. And um, yeah, just go ahead with him. So you can see some of the, 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 the way that they're going. Um, Zurio there, ah, he's not driving again now. So the drivers, he's obviously in the pit lane at the moment. Um, Zurio, I just wanted to show him though, because he was very quick in the weekly leaderboard last week for round one, and he was very quick in the week for this week as well. But he didn't make round one because um, he had a wheel failure. His wheel failed just before the start, so he didn't drive at all. So I think round one will have to be his one round he can drop scores from. Um, and, and you just have to be really good in from rounds two to six, um, starting with today. But we remember that that's exactly what he did as well last time, Zoriel, to win the championship in the. Uh, was it, uh, what did he win last year? It was. Uh, it was. He won the mm. Copper Class, didn't he, last year? To yeah. win it, he had a very, very slow start. He didn't win for the first three rounds of the season. Yeah. So maybe he's just a notorious slow starter. <laughs> that's true. He was very slow, but then he dominated Copper towards the end and, and won the championship in the end quite comfortably. So good to see him in the bronze class now. Um, and and, and, and like quite a lot of these bronze drivers, they are all improving all the time. Do you think he's a genuine competitor? We are, are you expecting to see him at the top of the leaderboard? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, he's actually, he plays a lot of, I think, uh, Seto Corsa, and he's very quick in a Seto Corsa. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not surprised to see him 
he'll be right there. He'll be fighting for pole position, I believe. Another guy I've really rather enjoyed commentating on, Gab Quintos from mm. the Philippines as well. Had a bit of a bad boy reputation for a long time, a yeah. little bit of humor amongst the Facebook followers, but uh, yeah. he seems to have settled down, Gab Quintos. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, he's always quick, but uh, yeah, he does get a bit, um, he does get in the wars a bit, doesn't he? Um, we've had to ban him from qualifying I think once or twice indeed did he, did he even get a race ban yeah he, he got, got a race a suspension. ban suspension that's, that's yeah, why he I did. got the nickname he got the name bad boy Quintos eh? um, but yes always dramatic to watch isn't he Voltaire Seiko is another of the Philippine contingent who are, are very vocal and very good in supporting mm. on Facebook. Please keep your comments. That's not the line that Voltaire's meant to take there. Oops. This is luckily practice. Hey, we've gone to him at the perfect time there, Voltaire. Um, but second place last week, we'd seen Voltaire Seiko do really well in previous editions of E-Racing GP. Mm. Um, we're on board with Jovis. I tell you what, one or two are having problems in this practice session, Alex. Yeah. I think they're all pushing really hard. Um, tire wear is going to be an issue. You know, tire wear is strong here. They're only 15-minute races, so you don't want a pit stop. Um, but I was talking to a few of the drivers in the driver briefing yesterday. They are a bit worried about making the tires last the whole way. So they are going to have to be a bit more conservative in the early, early laps, um, especially if you if you end up braking too late uh, consistently, locking up your tires, you're really going to burn through your tires really quickly in this game. Um, and and um, they'll be in trouble at the end of the race. So that suggests conservative driving style. And last yeah. year, last week, Francis Angelo Gonzalez was anything but conservative. In fact, he crashed out in race number one. Yeah, um, he did. But he had a really good race too, didn't he? He um, he went from the back. Did he finish second? I think in the reverse good race. So uh, he had a really great race. He was really happy with that. Um, it, we'll we'll see a bit more of him later in the race. Uh, we'll, we'll get some uh, on boards with him. He's always smiling when he drives. Um, always a pleasure to watch. Yeah, he got a fourth place in race number two, having been competing for the lead at one stage. So uh, yeah. as we just go through, Juriel Cruz is out there yeah. as well. Very uh, Filipino-centric our coverage here. Let's yeah. just change it just a little bit. And um, mm. uh, Jacob Lauter is a debutant from Malaysia. Ah. What do we expect from Jacob? Ah, Jacob's interesting. He's um, he's a carter. He's a very good carter. Just went up from um, uh, cadets. He's now in junior this year. He just did a race last year. In, in Shalom. Is it Shalom? No, Serpang. Um, so, but he's new to sim racing, so he's jumped into this. He, his experience level should be good enough for bronze, uh, but obviously he'll, let's see how he does. Um, yeah, so good baptisms on fire for him. Okay, we've given you a number of the riders to look at, look for, racers I should say, to, to look out for. Yeah. We have got a spotter's guide which uh, tells you who the teams are because there's a, a national championship as well as the overall championship. Can we pull up the spotter's guide Alex yeah. and maybe pick out the, the colours to really look out for and who you expect to see at the top of the standings? Okay, well like you said, there's a huge Filipino <laughs> challenge um, in this um, and, 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 and the name of the team, actually, if I can just remember, is um, Sim Racing Filipinas. And they are, you know, Seiko, Axel, uh, not Axel, Gonzalez, Zuru Sumadabila. They're in the white, blue, and red cars. So you, you can see those cars quite easily. Um, Stratus Motorsport is also there. They're in the green cars, a lot of cars. Adrian Ferguson, Yevan David will be in Stratus cars. So it's kind of nice. We have the Nations Cup, obviously, which will be the best country, um, the top two from each class will score points for their nation. Um, same for the team, the top team, the top two uh, for their team will score points as well. And um, that, will be get, that will get more interesting for sure as, as we go along. 30 potential starters, Alex. That means going in particularly to the, the keyhole, there is the potential, yeah. I'm delighted to say, for a lot of contact and a lot of clashes. Yeah, I mean, uh, we can pull up the map if you want. Um, it's a great track, uh, it's so, so up and down. This this track is as difficult as they get to learn. You know, Nordschleife in the Nürburgring is the toughest track in the, in the world for sure. But this has all those elements, all this up and down changes, you know, it's all those elevation changes where you get light and get heavy um, and, and knowing how to attack that, um, which always makes tracks are tricky to drive that's what makes Nordschleife so great and that's what this track has there's plenty of elevation changes right in the middle of the corner uh, it's actually the sort of track we don't get here in Asia um, we, we see them a lot in America I see them a lot in Europe um, but we don't really get these elevation changes so I know I know when I haven't been to Europe for a while and I go to Europe and I race on those tracks it's like oh okay old school tracks I gotta get my head around all these elevation changes again because uh, we don't we just don't have to worry about them usually 
We're on board with the championship leader, Felix Jung, as we come into the last minute of practice. As usual, there will be a situation where we uh, have a five-minute qualification period. After qualification, they go in race order. Then there's a reverse grid, and who has pole depends upon a flip of a coin, which is a, an interesting one of us for, for those of us who like consistency. Yeah. Yeah. But you love to put these little peccadillos in, Mr. Young. I know you love your consistency. The problem with the first two editions was people knew the, what the reverse grid was so they kind of drove to it you know they're like oh okay I'm, I know it's a full reverse grid so I'm going to just finish last if I've had a bad couple of laps so people were checking out quite early so I didn't want that to happen so what we're doing is we're doing half grid reverse grids and we and no one knows what that reverse is it's position between 13 and 18 and literally throw a dice whatever number comes up then I enter that into the server just for the race uh, and I can't remember what I entered for bronze class I think it might, I can't remember. Anyway, so then that would be the reverse grid for race two. Um, no one knows what it is, so they can't drive to it, um, and it's a bit of a surprise. So there's a warning for all you drivers out there. If you think you can get one over Alex Young, you cannot. <laughs> right, we are all just about ready for qualification. It's a six minute qualification time. My apologies, I, I can't read my notes, but a six minute qualification time. Let's go on board with Zorio Sumadabilia. He uh, missed round one, as you suggested last week, Alex. Let's just see what kind of a form he has been and how he can cope with this uh, uh, mid-Ohio circuit. Oh, it's uh, he's decided not to go. Let's have a false start and go again, Zorio. Yeah, he obviously did not get the exit out of the last corner he wanted to, so he decided to restart it. Um, I don't like it doing that. I, I would rather get a banker lap in first. No, it's not perfect. Um, and because you've got six minutes, you've got plenty of time. You're going to get two, maybe even three laps here. So anyway, through turn one, half throttle lift through turn one um, and um, carry the speed down this long, long back straight. I'm surprised Zero didn't use a pit lane. We are allowing drivers to use a pit lane in qualifying, just not allowed to use them in the race. Now turn two, very important to get a good exit out of here. Yeah, that's just about right. I think he could have braked a bit later for turn two. Maybe he's still a bit conservative because this is his first lap in qualifying. Turn three, easy flat out kink. We don't really consider that a corner, do we? Um, now coming to turn four. Turn four is actually quite a fast corner. It's a 90 degree right. You can overtake here, but you have to be alongside if you're going to overtake someone. Um, stick to the left. Use the camber of the road. Don't get too far to the right, otherwise you're in trouble. Once you're over the brow, you can go to the right. Small lift. <clears throat> big lift actually use the curb on the exit oh he doesn't use the curb I know the Indy cars they like to use a curb there now we're in the uh, S's coming down to Thunder Valley over the right hander here now you need a good exit there over that brow there you always get a little bit of wheel spin um, through Thunder Valley this left hander now is uh, turn 11 carry the speed nicely done effectively one more corner to go turn 12 the carousel does go on have to be patient on the break here seems just about right wasn't a spectacular lap by any means but seems pretty clean and it's good enough for pole i'm going to take that back that was a spectacular lap eight tenths quicker than anyone else brilliant stuff from zuriel summer i asked the question is he the real deal you said you think he may well be and at the moment a lap time of 124.6 is the best by a considerable margin. Francis Angelo Gonzalez is second fastest at the moment, Alex. He's uh, nearly half a second down. Let's see how we can do on his outlap. Yeah, let's watch now. Fran Francis, he goes to turn one. Small lift there. He's, um, we'll try and get his on board as well. Let's watch him on Zoom as well. Um, he's been he's been doing very really good. Smiling Assassin should have won race one, or, or at least finished on the podium race one in round one. Uh, did finish on the podium round two, race two. Oh, didn't had to have a couple stabs at the, the, st at the steering, a couple stabs at the throttle there. That's not going to be the exit he needs. He looks very calm, not smiling at the moment. I prefer it when he's smiling because it shows he's relaxed. Yeah, not a good sector one. He might as well restart this lap, mate, because you have four tenths down in sector one, lost all the time. Um, yeah. Get out of it, Francis. Stop the lap. Restart the lap because this lap's not going to be good enough for pole position. Yeah, there you go. Now he's restarting the lap. Let's stay on board with him because he is P2, uh, P3 two, P right now. Quintos has gone quicker. Bad boy Quintos. Is he going to be enough time? Oh, Francis is struggling. He's not going to cross the line in time. Ah, no. Okay, let's leave Francis then because um, he's not going to get across the line in time. Maybe we can ride with Quintos and see how he's doing. Axel. 
He gets a bit quicker. He goes four, f f fifth quickest. Edward Wong goes up to three. Maybe we can follow um, Quintos. Um, see where Quintos is. Uh, there's Quintos. Oh, sloppy second sector. Four tenths down. But maybe he can close the gap to Sumadabila as he crosses the line. He does go faster. 25-0. But that's still half a second off Sumadabila. But it does look like that will guarantee him Pope's uh, front row start. And how about the man who is leading the overall championships just at the moment, Alex? Currently fifth fastest. There's still one and a half minutes to go. So if you're you if you start your lap now, you probably have got enough time to get a quick lap in. There's still plenty of chance for some of the Billy to be thrown off pole position. This is what Gav Kintos actually. Gav Kintos did have enough time to get across the lap. It's my correction. I, was, I, I misread the timing time. So there are a few drivers with enough time to go a bit quicker. So uh, I do believe Kintos got over the line in time. Tell you who, for sure, Francis uh, Gonzalez also will have another chance here um, as he goes through turn two. Nice and clean there. Let's see as he comes up to the end of sector one if he can go quicker. Um, I tell you what, Des, let's watch um, Francis Gonzalez. I'd like to see what Francis Gonzalez is doing uh, because he is looking quite good right now. Let's see him through. He's gone. We don't see a sector one time right now, but it looks clean at the moment. At least I know this lap will be in enough time to finish. Comes through the S's, um, comes up to Thunder Valley now. Ooh, looks like a good exit there. Uh, maybe could have gotten the throttle a little bit earlier. Oh, uh, no, bad sector one, eight tenths down. So this won't be good, good. Sorry, bad sector two, eight tenths down. This won't be good enough pole position. I think sumadabila has got it, Des. Wow, what a reintroduction back at the moment. There's still a few seconds left in qualification, 15 seconds, so that could change. Edward Wong from Malaysia has got himself up onto the second row of the grid, a 125.2. Only one racer, though, Summer de Bilia broke 125, and he is a good half second faster than Kintos, who will be alongside him on the front row of the grid. Axel Nockham, who's got plenty of fans on Facebook, shouts out for him from Randy Alonso, Angelo Gar Jacob and Leroy James all saying go Axel no come well Axel currently will be on the fourth row of the grid wow. so all just about set Summer de Bilia lived up to your big billing Alex Young wow. well he did a great first lap what well, but actually his second lap was a quite a bit quicker as well and that certainly solidified his pole position really good job by the Filipino driver um, he's going to be hard to beat, especially around this track. It's all about the start. Uh, you can see the map here. His start, he needs to get a good start. Um, he has to get a clean one, get a clean two. two. Two is going to be key for him. If he can get a clean two and still be in the lead after turn two, um, then I think this will be his race to lose. That finger at the bottom, the keyhole corner, is absolutely key, Alex Young. You get that right. Uh, you avoid confrontation and you put yourself in a good position. Summa de Bilia on pole. We are underway. 15-minute race. What kind of a start has Summa de Bilia had? It's a good start. He's got nobody near him as he looks backwards. Well, look at that. That is as clean as a whistle from Zoriel Summa de Bilia, Alex Young. Wow, we Philippines, one, two, three, and four. Yep, someone's spinning the distance. Uh, but yes, really, really good turn one. Ah, oh, that's perfect. Sumadibila, he's gone. Great turn two. That's exactly what he needed to do. Philippines, one, two, three, four. Really good result so far for this first couple corners. We go down to Yevon David, who's currently the best of the rest in P5, the Sri Lankan in the monster racing. He is trying to get close onto the back of Voltaire Seiko, who is currently second in the overall championship standings. But at the moment, this is a Filipino party. Yeah, it's going to be hard to break this, but Yevon there, look at it, the older brother of Yannick. Oh, well, actually, the, the twins, actually. Let me get that right. I'm not really sure who's older, actually. Um, it's only a matter but, of uh, seconds. Yeah. Ooh, oh, Yannick on the inside. Yevon, sorry. Brilliant move uh, from Yevon David. And you can look at the determination. Those gloves are grasping tight onto that steering wheel. He's got himself up into P4, Yevon David. Yeah, really good job there. Well, he's, uh, uh, Seiko, though, looking to come back at him, though. Not close enough at the moment. Now Seiko has to look behind him because Emmanuel is right behind him as well. Edward Wong, what a bad start he had. He's down in P7. 
Indeed, there is Edward Wong as he just comes over the start-finish line in the red and white livery. He's got Rio Emanuel and Voltaire Seiko in his sights, but he's got, as he looks back, he's got Axel Nocom, the man with more fans than anybody else there. Championship leader Felix Jung, Alex, um, yeah. is currently in P10. Wow, that's not the start he needed. I don't know what he's doing down there. He didn't have a good qualifying either. Maybe he didn't get the practice he needed. This sort of track is so tricky to drive. Um, if you don't get the practice beforehand in the week leading up to this race, you're not going to be there. I just want to go through a couple of others. Henry Coe, third in the championship standings. A mile off the pace, Alex. Didn't wow. qualify very well. Down in 24th position. Wow, so Henry Coe, disaster. Oh, someone spun there. Um, that, uh, yeah, and it's, it's Felix, Felix Young. It's Felix Young who's spun out. Wow, Felix. Wow would not want to start this day like this. Zorio Summerdabilia, welcome back. Sorry, I've kind of cut away from you. I'm on with Summerdabilia at the moment. Uh, bottom right of your screen, we've got plenty of people on the Zoom uh, uh, camera. And I'm a little bit too quick on my cutting sometimes. Yeah, but that's all right. We'll just stick with Summerdabilia if you want. Um, or if you want to go someone else, Des. But Summerdabilia, looking at that gap, 1.4 seconds just did everything right over these first couple laps and uh, he's gone. Hey, you should have elevated him a couple of levels. That is a huge lead that he's got from Kintos, uh, Francis Angelo Gonzalez. Yevon David is doing well to hold off Voltaire Seiko, but Seiko is trying to make a move from him at the moment. Seiko in the blue and white, Yevon David in the green and black. We're on board with Voltaire Seiko. Yeah, look at that Seiko there. It, we, he looks so calm and collected as you look at him on the right. He's chewing gum or he's chewing something, uh, but he's on the. He's looking for the slipstream. He's right behind Yannick David. Oh, he's not really close enough. Oh, he does have a look. He does have a look. Oh, he actually has contact. Oh, looks like he's just about got away with that. No, he hasn't. He's on the grass and he gives the position back. Well, we're perfect time to be on board there because. Uh, Voltaire Seiko is then under in pressure, a pressure from Rio Emanuel. Rio Emanuel goes. Voltaire Seiko gets out of my way, young fella, and retains fifth, uh, fifth position. Or does he know he's lost out to Rio Emanuel? It was Edward Wong he was trying to swat away. And he's lost that place to Edward Wong as well. Well, the pressure of being on screen. Too much for Voltaire Seiko. Well, yeah, so he was our Philippines Am champion uh, from a few months ago. Feels like years ago. Um, so yeah, bad lap for him from uh, challenging Evan David to uh, slipping back down the order. Wow, okay, let's go into the solo leader, Zuriel Simodabilia. Maybe you didn't put him up enough levels. Maybe this fella should go straight into gold, Alex. Oh, certainly silver, perhaps. Um, but look, he's, he's a man on a mission right now. Um, looking calm, collected. Um, yeah, he needs a point, so uh, he didn't score any points in round one after the, the, that steering wheel issue. So um, he's going to be looking for maximum points. Um, he already be uh, still 10 minutes to go, though, Des. You know, anything can still happen. Certainly can, of course. Uh, forgive me for getting ahead of myself. But we have seen him lead races from the front and rather enjoy the lack of pressure. His lead over Kintos is a good two and a half seconds. There is Gav Kintos, and it's still Philippines 1, 2, and 3. Alex Young must be something in the water in Manila that's helping these guys drive so well. Yeah, that is. It's, it's great to see him doing well as well. Um, so many Filipinos right in the top half of the, of the field. Um, what we're riding on board now of Gav, bad boy Gav Kintos. Uh, you can see him. There he is on the right, um, looking nice and concentrated there. Oh, as he goes through the carousel now, Luke needs to get a good exit out of here. Oh, he's brought back the gap, actually. He's brought back half a second. He's only two seconds off the leader now. So it's not done. Quintos is going, no, I, I may have had a couple not so perfect laps, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not giving up on the win just yet. If we can, we'll go down to uh, the overall championship leader who, where was he? Felix Jung, really struggling in P23. We saw him there. He's not really been able to make up Henry t any time on Henry Ko. And so Felix Jung, wow, P23. We weren't expecting this, Alex. No, the driver from Hong Kong, disaster really. You know, he, he didn't have to win the race, but he, you know, he needed to score good points for the championship. And he's not going to score any points at the moment unless he, he gets incredibly lucky with a lot of carnage ahead of him. 
Um, and, and he's not going to be in a position to get the reverse grid race, you know. He, he needs to try and make some positions. If he can get to the midfield, maybe he can start at the front of the reverse grid race. But to be honest, I don't think there's enough time. Okay, let's have a look at maybe some of the other nationalities. Mohamed Zikri, who uh, didn't do too badly. I'm trying to think. He, he was in the lead at some stage. Sixth overall in the championship standings. Zikri currently in P17. Uh, trying to get onto the tail of Adam Amir from Singapore and he's got fellow Malaysian Kent Lau just behind him. Yeah, so there we've got Zikri driving there. Um, yeah, he, I recognise that sim. I'm going to have to tell him to move the mic next time so we can see his pretty face a bit better. But uh, yeah, fully concentrated there. We've seen him really quick. He's won races, or at least uh, he's been on the podium. He's very strong in the Causeway edition, wasn't he? Had some very strong races then. But... Um, he was also okay last week as well, but uh, he, he's not going to like this. He's too far down for my liking. Are those shoulders too tight? Is he a little bit tense on, on the, in the driving uh, driving posture? Yeah, a good spot actually. Um, he's actually tilting his head as well as the uh, simulator G so the, of the steering wheel will come through. Oh, he's oh, going to have to defend to turn three now. Sorry, turn two now. Kent Lau it is who tries to get there. He's just swatted away by Mohamed Zikri. We can concentrate on the, the lower drivers because the top three are clear. But let's go on to Yevon David because Yevon David's in a battle for P4. Rio Emanuel alongside him. The black and green against the luminous green. Yevon David, there's the, the tiny little fella. A little too big for, uh, too little for the uh, driving seat, but massive massive appetite for the race yeah Yevon David with a uh, Stratos Motorsport um, and, and the guy behind him Emmanuel is um, with a different team let me just see what team he's with uh, crap I forgot the name yeah I can't find it um, but yes he's a little bit further down the Indonesian driver um, yeah it'd be good for his championship though if he can finish in the top five Rio Emanuel just ahead of them. Quintos is under pressure from Francis Angelo Gonzalo. Suma de Bilia has re-established that three-second lead now, Alex. So Quintos in P2 is now feeling the pressure from behind from Francis Angelo Gonzalo. Good yeah. battle between these two Filipinos. It is very good indeed. Okay, I, I remember the name. Emmanuel's with Team NSR Racing. Um, so yeah, he, he'll need to try and pick up some points. But back to Gonzalo. Um, out of turn two, he's in the slipstream. This will help him. He'll be able to creep closer to Quintos, but um, he's still not close enough to have a challenge. Five minutes to go. Oh, I'd love to know how the tire wear is going. Um, this will be an issue as, as we get to the end of the race. Ariel Ray says, "Go, go, go, Gav, Gav, Gav!" So much support for Axel Mariano. I'm wondering if he's got a supporters club over in the Philippines at the moment. The news for Axel Mariano not come. He's down in P7. He's got Voltaire Seiko perhaps in his sights. That's the man in front of him, but he's going to have to go some in these last five minutes, Alex, if he's going to try to get a podium. Okay, well, actually, since we're with uh, Ocon, um, knock on, let's look at him. He's, he's <laughs> 11 Fabulous. years old. Look at that. It's great to see the Sim so much bigger than he is. Great to see him there driving, though. Oh, utter focus there. Utter focus. Let's see if he can get close to Voltaire Seiko. Great experience for him. Great for us to see the variety of races that we have got there. There is the sim. There is the car. He's a little bit wayward, a little bit uh, mm. too much of the, the back end wiggling there. Yeah. But he is closing up on Voltaire Seiko, Alex, to yeah. be fair. That's good to see. I mean, we've got a lot of real world drivers here. A lot of the kids um, who are karting and stuff are unable to drive right now because of, of what's ha happening with the pandemic and, and lockdowns and various lockdowns and stuff. So this is the only racing that they can get at the moment and it uh, really adds to their experience. Leila uh, says, uh, whoa, Axel, they, they like that onboard shot there, but I'm afraid we're going to cut away from him because Summer de Bilia, now the gap between Summer de Bilia and Go Gav Go is less than a second. Oh, and uh, Kintos goes a little bit wide there, but has Summer de Bilia made a mistake or become a little bit complacent, Alex Young? Well, he doesn't look rattled at all, does he? He looks so calm, but he's definitely lost some time. I wonder if tire wear is starting to creep in. You know, he pushed really hard in the opening three laps to make that gap, and there's no doubt about it. Kintos and Gonzalez are definitely closing the gap now. 
Ahead of him, he's got Nazir Asman as a backmarker that might complicate things. Normally, to be fair, the backmarkers do get themselves out of the way pretty quickly. But this is uh, the bronze category. And I tell you, uh, he's going to have to work hard to get around him, Summer Debelia. And that has held up the Philippine leader. And Kintos is within half a second. Wow, really did. The backmarker did a good job of getting out of the way. Got out of the way of all three of them. Um, so now it's resume racing, but uh, whoa, let's see, three minutes to go, two more laps at least, um, and we have a battle for the lead on our hands. We certainly do. We didn't expect this to come in place. We've also got a battle for P4. Yev and David in the green under pressure from Edward Wong. Edward Wong, the best of Malaysia, is uh, in the red and white livery. He's trying to come on close onto Yev and David. Yev and though will be very aware as he looks ahead of the back marker and then the three disappearing Filipinos. But Edward Wong is really, really trying to make a move here. There is Edward oh. in screen, bit of contact. And that just propels Yevon David away. But look at the focus and concentration on Edward Wong. Wow, look at him. He's, that was a bit clumsy. He touched, but um, fortunately he didn't push off Yevon because then he would have definitely have got a penalty. Um, but uh, still enough time. He's a little bit quicker than Yevon at the moment. He had a disastrous lap one. Um, that's why he's out of position. But he mustn't panic. There's still another two laps to go. Um, well, sorry, lap and a half, shall we say. Um, so there's still enough time. But, oh, I made a mistake there. He, he needs to be careful. He has to be mistake free. Oh, another mistake. Tywear possibly kicking in here. Two or one. There could be two laps to go, Alex. There are two laps to go. As they go over the start-finish line, that's the good news for Edward Wong. He has got a lot of time to try and pick up that uh, space over Yevon David. Up front, ahead of them, Francis Angelo Gonzalez is moving on to the tail of Gav Kintos. Summer de Billy has re-established a one-and-a-half second lead. Now Kintos has got to look behind rather than forward, and the smile is back. The smiling assassin has Kintos in his sights. <laughs> As he is. I like it when he's smiling. He seems more faster when he does that. He looks more relaxed and he's able to go and he's in the slipstream. Still not quite close enough yet. Not close enough to have a look at this part. But oh, he's looking. Oh, he, uh, he can't overtake this whole middle sector of the lap. You can't really overtake unless the guy in front makes a mistake. If the guy in front makes a mistake, you can try and dive down the inside of him. But otherwise, you just have to be patient and wait for sector one. Nizo Risky has picked up a drive through penalty through speeding in the pit lane. The Indonesian is way down in P20 at the moment. This is the battle for P2. We're on board with the man in P3 looking back. Kintos, that is the face he's looking back into. If you can get the helmet and Gonzalez got very close there. Summer de Bilia, while these two are dueling with each other, will go into the final lap with a lead of over a second and a half. Yeah, so okay, Gonzalez is close enough. He's got to be good through turn one. Turn one, you have a tiny lift, like a half throttle lift. Oh, he's, he's really committed. He's on the curb with the exit. He will get some slipstream down this straight here. But this next corner is the most important corner of the race for him. He has to break late. Oh, he's nice and wide, which is good, which means he should be able to get on the throttle a bit earlier than Kintos. And he does. And he's really in the slipstream now, Des. Get back in the slipstream there, Francis. See if, he, if Kintos covers the inside. If he doesn't cover the inside, go for the inside. But no, Kintos is covering the inside. So Gonzalez goes to the outside. Still, that's excellent defensive work from Gav Kintos. Good disciplined work as well. Summer de Bilia is the man ahead of them. Yevon David and Edward Wonga having a scrap Whoa. as well for P3. Round the outside goes Gonzalez. Can't get there. The smile is gone. It's a furrow brow. The smile is back. Kintos, though, is holding on to P2. A race to the line. Half a lap to go. This is the battle for P2. Whoa, he's so close. It's so hard to overtake though. He's definitely quicker at this point, but he's not making it through at the moment. Two more corners to go as we go to Thunder Valley. Round Thunder Valley, then we have the carousel. Must break away temporarily to show you Summer de Bilia. Summer de Bilia will come through and take the victory. Zoriel Summer de Bilia, he makes a comeback victory. Kintos holds off Francis Angelo Gonzalo. Yevin David holds off Edward Wong for P4. The smile belongs to Zoriel Summer de Bilia. In fact, there's a brow, a mopping of the brow from Zoriel Summer de Bilia. Welcome back to E Racing GP.
terrific performance from Zoriel. Can we go on board Axel Knockham, please? The youngster has got so many fans on Facebook. If we can just uh, see the youngster's reaction, he, he's, he's in P7. He's he's left. He's, he's left. left his rig. I think he's gone. He's gone for a quick toilet break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There he is. There is, no there is Axel. He has gone. It's past his bedtime, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I know a lot of these drivers get super excited, um, and 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 the bladders get a little bit trembly shall we say so they're off to the toilet as quick as they can um, in between breaks but what a great race by Zuro Simo de Bila. very happy for him he missed round one with the steering uh, with a mechanical issue with his rig but back in bronze his first time in bronze after winning copper in GE2 well done Zuro oh Palamo Hazik says Philippines one two three whoa 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 quite right too Leroy James says, oh, brilliant, congratulations, Filipino. Leila Cabuyadal, I believe, says, Axel, go. Great job from Axel. So says Leila and Jamie. He's certainly got his fan club. He's done well to finish in P7, but Zorio Summerdabilia not only picks up the 25 points for the victory, he also picks up the fastest lap time, and that is a welcome back to e-racing with thumbs up. Brilliant performance from Zoriel Summer de Bilia. Wow, okay. Now we've got the reverse grid race. Um, and I can't remember what I put in the server, but I think it was reverse grid of the top 17. Or my, yeah, I think it was top 17, might be top 15. It was either 17 or 15. Anyway, we'll soon find out who's on pole position. Um, and uh, so the guys who won at the front, they're gonna start at the back, um, 16, 17 position. Uh, the guys in that position are gonna start at the front. We're looking at the map now. Um, it's a short track, it's tight and twisty, and you can really only overtake through turns two and four. And it is, as usual, a 15 minute race. We are all just about set. We're waiting for the confirmation. Is it 17th or 15th? I tell you, the guy in 17th, it's hoping that he is on pole position. The graphic down the left hand side tells you that Glenn Baldwin and Mervyn Sung are on the first row of the grid from Orange Racing so they're quite happy Mohamed Zikri and P3 will be delighted that he's on the uh, second row but he's squeezed out terrific work from Henry Coe Henry D is looking for a better result a lot of contact but Mervyn Sung is leading Zikri is dropped down to P5 because Adam Amir has also got through Alex Young <laughs> yes, um, small finger problem there. Oh, running wide at turn two. Cold brakes and tires, everyone has to be a bit careful, but pretty much most of them make it through. Mervyn Sung has got himself in the lead. Mohamed Zikri, we had a look at him on board. Here he is currently in P5. He's got Juriel Cruz behind him. Uh, and for once, the Filipinos are a long way off the lead. Sixth and seventh, LJ Mutoc is there. And then Seiko's got himself up into P10. But it's not the Filipino party anymore. And Mohamed Zikri would love to hold on to P5 and improve his performance from the first race, Alex. Yeah, he's looking, he has got the pace to run to get into the, into the podium positions. Um, but just a bit of a scrappy first lap contact at turn one. Just needs to keep it calm, keep it calm, and, and the opportunities will come his way. Let's go back to the race leader where Henry Coe has re-established himself in the lead. Third place in the overall standings, no points picked up in race number one. Henry will maybe look at this reverse grid race as an opportunity as Glenn Baldwin goes wide, wide, wide and loses two places. As a result, Adam Amir and Mervyn Sung go through. Baldwin in fourth, in fact, Baldwin loses P4 to LJ Mutoc and Zikri is up into P6. Let's look at the uh, Filipinos and uh, last time, Zuriel Summer de Bilia won race number one. He's got himself up into P14 in race number two, Alex Young. Good progress. Yeah. So, yeah, good, good, good progress. Um, most importantly, he needs to keep it clean. We saw Thiago in Copper Class earlier on win race one, then get into too much contact in race two um, and not finish the race. So Zuriel needs to make sure he doesn't do that. It's all about collecting points. Yeah, he's slowly made his way up into the top 13. Now, there's still best part of 13 minutes to go, so there is time. Just pick up points, be regular uh, right the way through. Voltaire Seiko is in a battle with Gav Kintos. Kintos currently in P10. All those white and blue liveries belong to Filipino drivers, wow. Alex. Wow, from P7 to 13, all Filipino drivers. Awesome. They, they, they hunt in packs, they do. 
they uh, stalk down their prey together and um, it's, it's like watching, yeah, it's like watching a pride of lions <laughs> and the prey are all in front of them. There is Gav Kintos overtaking Viltair Seiko, getting himself up into P9. The top 10 racers all score points in uh, the reverse good race and uh, he's looking determined and he's got himself a little bit of a, a wobble there as they come to the end of lap number two. Kintos will be in P8. Let's go up to the race lead once again where Henry Ko of Singapore makes it a Singapore, Singapore, Australia. One, two, three. Yep. Henry Ko leads the way, but Glenn Baldwin is right on the tail of Adam Amir. Yeah, so they've got Adam Amir there in our screen there. We're watching on, on board of him. He's on the right there. He's holding off Baldwin. Baldwin's new to us from Australia. Uh, glad to have him with us. Um, and he's got, oh, he didn't get the drive out of two that he wanted. And Adam Amir is able to extend the gap to him. Yeah, so Adam Amir has got some, let's see if he can put down the lap time, see if he can close the gap to Henry Cole. Well, at the moment, the gap is 1.9 seconds to Henry Cole. Now, Henry, you can do well. If you do well in enough second races, you'll be fairly high up the overall championship standings. Let's slow look at uh, uh, Axel Nokom. He's in a battle with Zorio Summerdabilia for P10 uh, at the moment. At the moment, Axel, though, is just being shoved back into P11 by the winner of race number one. Ah, there he is. He's back from his pee break or, or, or whatever break he was doing. Uh, look how focused he is. Great to see him there. 11 position is really good at this point. Um, I'm sure he wish he'd be a bit higher, but there's still plenty of time to do that. Grizel Dixon is another Axel fan. I tell you, what, he'll have his own fan club if he begins to win many races. But at the moment, he's in P10. And Zuriel Summerdabilia is the man who has just edged ahead of him in P9. We're trying to give as much notice as we can of the races further down. But we must go back to the race lead. And Henry Coe, that is a big lead that he's established, Alex Young. Oh, yeah. He's driving really well, Henry is. Um, look at that, he's just pulling away and, and, and his, it, the lap times are good as well. 26.3 is his fastest lap time. So he's in the ballpark at the moment and uh, Adam Amir in second position is starting to hold the rest of them back a bit. A little bit and in that little pack you've got Yevon David as well. He's another youngster. He's in the, uh, the green livery. Um, Sri Lankan based out of Singapore. We're on board with him just at the moment. He's got Baldwin and Amir ahead of him. Is Amir holding people up, Alex? It looks like he is. Yeah, I think he is. I mean, Baldwin's had a couple stabs at him. and Had some contact. Uh, oh, look at that. Good move by Baldwin. Down the inside. Really, really well done. Opportunistic move. Um, there was some contact, but it was completely fair what he did. Oh, Adam Amir tries to come back at him. This is going to end in tears. You know this is going to end in tears. Oh, so much contact. Baldwin is battered away. Kintos comes in for a little nibble as well. Baldwin smashes into Yevin David. Yevin hits the tire wall and disappears off the leaderboard down into P13. 14, 15. Meantime, Henry Coe extends his lead at the front of four and a half seconds. Okay, so I can see those three drivers are involved in that. They're going to be at the stewards, hopefully sending protest videos so we can go through it all later. Um, but yeah, Yevon David could do nothing about that. Just got hit. Um, and that was it. That looks like his race is done. So Gav Kintos has been able to capitalize. Look at Kintos. He's got himself inside Glenn Baldwin, who comes back for a little bit more. Glenn is deciding he wants to play a little bit of physicality. The Aussie trying to show off his muscles. At the moment, though, Kintos in P3. Adam Amir is the man ahead of him. Can Kintos get past him? He sways to one side. Tries to take the inside line. Can't get there. Breaks late. Second place for Gav Kintos. And he takes Slem Baldwin through with him. Yeah, Kintos did it, sold in the dummy nicely. Um, and was able to go down the inside. Adam still could have recovered the position, but he just outbraked himself. And that's it. He lost two positions. Solidero Neaj and Jordan Jason, they're more Axel fans. We're going to have to ban these Axel fans. But Henry Coe leads, Gav Kintos second, Glenn Baldwin third, Amir down to fourth and under pressure from Joseph Flores. Flores, more contact on Adam Amir as he tries to force his way through. Loses the place to Jonathan Takumi Lee. Oh, someone spun there. Uh, I think that was um, Baldwin. Yes, Baldwin spun. So he's... Uh, He's going back, he's shuffling back into the pack. 
as, a, as few cars go by. And in the meantime, Zoriel Summerdabelia's work his way, Alex, up into P7. Wow, really? That's interesting. And lots of time still left. Seven, just under seven and a half minutes to go. Summerdabelia looking good there. He has to be patient, though. We're seeing a lot of cars getting a bit impatient, just touching each other a lot. Um, oh, Zero makes another position as he overtakes uh, Gonzalez. No, uh, Flores. He overtakes Flores. But um, just has to be patient here and not try anything crazy. Well, he hasn't tried anything crazy. Now, we're just over halfway through the race. He's pulled himself right the way from the tail to get himself up into P6. He's got Mad Boy Baldwin ahead of him and Jonathan Takumi Lee. Adam Amir is eminently catchable. Who spun? Somebody spun. It's Voltaire Seiko. Bad Ooh. moment for Voltaire Seiko as he goes spinning down to P17 and lower. There is Seiko and his race, I think, is done. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be able to continue. It doesn't look like there's damage on the car. We are running full damage in this series. Um, although there's been a lot of contact. I'm surprised there aren't more car cars off the, off the track, to be honest. Okay, let's go back here. This is the battle for P3. Adam Ami is in the blue. Ahead of Jonathan Takumi Lee, Glenn Baldwin and Zuriel Summer de Belia. He is just at the tail of that little run of four. Francis Angelo Gonzalez not too far away from them either. But the bird's eye view belongs to Summer de Belia. Yeah. Getting the slipstream. This is always tricky as a driver. And you see drivers fighting ahead of you. He's like, which way should I go? Should I go to the inside? Should I go to the outside? He thinks about the inside of the moment. Um, wow, Adam Amir is still in third position. That's really impressive to see that he's still there. Um, Baldwin, though, in fourth, though, he's got Takumi Lee all over his back, breathing down his neck. Takumi should be sitting in a slipstream. He's not for some reason. Um, use that slipstream, mate, and, and see if you can get him. Okay, Takumi Lee in the orange car looks to the inside. No, decides to back out of it. And Baldwin hangs on to P4 for now. J.S. Navarro says, Quintos! I think I've said that about right, quite rightly too. Gab Quintos currently second. Movement there. That is Jonathan Katumi Lee trying to make a move. And he's lost the place to Summa de Bilia. He's lost the place to Francis Angelo Gonzalez. Terrific move from the two Filipinos once again. Summa de Bilia is now up into P4, Alex Young. Wow, really good move there. He's a bit opportunistic as well. Oh no, he has a moment. That was unnecessary. We talked about not making mistakes. I think Adam Amir maybe caught him out. It was a bit slow through that corner. Um, and uh, well, someone to be there, I thought he was almost going to end up backwards into the gravel, but managed to recover that and only lose one position. Let's go back up to the front. Just four and a half minutes remaining. Henry Coe is being hauled in by bad boy Gav Kintos, who's currently a second and a half down. That lead, Alex Young, at one stage was three and a half, even four seconds. Really good laps there by Kintos. Wow, very impressive indeed. Does he have fastest lap? Uh, 125.8. Yes, he does. Oh, yeah. So he's, he's producing the lap times. I wonder if Henry's made a mistake. Yeah, he did. His last lap was a 27. So, um... Maybe the nerves are getting to him. He's not won a race in the ERGP yet. Um, and uh, he's starting to look like he's, the mistakes are coming in because he shouldn't be in the 27s. He has done a 25-8, so we know the pace is there. But a bit of inconsistency creeping into the Singaporeans driving. Gav Kintos was a full second quicker than Henry Coe on their last lap. There is the battle between P1 and P2. The differential is under a second, Alex Young. Meantime, just behind them, Adam Amir under pressure from Summer de Bilia, who's currently in P4, looking on the back of Adam Amir, wants to get back to back podium, Summer de Bilia, wants to welcome him back. We're on board with Adam oh! Amir. Summer de Bilia spins and goes down to six, seven, eight. Eighth place for Summa de Bilia. Big moment there. And again, more contact for Zuriel. Summa de Bilia. How is that car still going? We have damage on full. And uh, seeing so much knocking, I would have thought these cars would be not finishing. But somehow, Summa de Bilia is still driving. Um, that's remarkable. But, he has um, been battered from head to tail. Still hangs on to P7. Kintos, meantime, is closing, 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 Alex. Yes, he is indeed. He's going to be right on his tail very soon. 
Yeah, no, I was just checking the servers. Um, it's definitely, damage is definitely on full. These Formula 4 cars are really, really tough. We saw in round one with the Indy cars, the smallest amount of, of touch contact um, would um, result in them um, being broken and suspension bits being damaged. But these Tatus cars are obviously a lot stronger and somehow with all this carnage and all this contact, these cars are still going in a straight line. Gav Kintos picked up points in both race one and two in round one. Here, why wow, he is right on the tail of Henry Coe. Let's look backwards from Henry Coe. That is the view that he gets of Gav Kintos, and that's a, a little bit too close for Henry Coe's uh, imagination. 151 to go. We've got, will there be two laps? There's certainly this plus one. Will yeah. there be this plus two? I think uh, Henry's used up his tyres. As he went through turn one, you could see the yaw in that car was quite a bit. Like maybe he's used up the rear tyres or something because, you know, Henry's in the 27s again and, and really that's that's quite a bit slower than the pace he was doing earlier on in the in the lap. Oh, as Quintos makes a mistake. Um, so maybe Henry's fast pace in the first few laps just burnt through his tyres just a bit too much. So what Henry Coe must try to do is hold on. He's got an 11 second lead from P3. Doesn't want to be too oh. aggressive as Kintos goes into the lead for the very first time. Goes a little bit wide but is able to hold on. And Gav Kintos for the Philippines looks to build on a good result in race number one. Has the lead, a serious look on his face. But now he's got the lead. It's make no mistakes, Alex Young. Wow, Kintos said. Focused, focused, and wearing the spectacles on the on the screen right now. Can Henry Cole come back? Henry's not given up. Look at that. He's right there. But does he have the tires under him that he can make another move? There's going to be one more lap after this one. Henry's all over the back of Quintos at this point. Yeah, it is so tight. If it, it was a little bit slower, Gav Quintos could be taking the finishing line here, but he's not. He's got a battle for one more lap. In the meantime, P3, Alex, just to tell you, Francis Angelo Gonzalez has got ahead of Adam Amir and Gonzalez is on a podium. Philippines 1, 2, 3 in race 1, 1, 3 and 6 here in race number 2 as we look again at the smiling assassin. Yeah, the bronze class belongs to the Philippines this weekend. They are doing so well indeed. Uh, Gonzalez finally makes it through Adam Amir, past Adam Amir. Adam has been a really difficult car to overtake this race. Um, I haven't seen him do anything illegal. Um, but uh, drivers have found it really tough to get past him. Right, back up to the front. Kintos hasn't been able to get away from Henry Coe. And Henry Coe, to his credit, is battling away to see if he can get on the inside. Oh! Sorry, that. Oh, Henry then makes a mistake. And Kintos has got himself a two second lead all of a sudden. Yeah, Henry just made a small mistake there. Uh, did a half spin, was able to recover. Uh, but that's it. Kintos is in the clear. Uh, J.S. Navarro will be happy, happy, happy that Gav Kintos is going to race away with this one. Two and a half seconds and going away. Henry Coe, a brave effort. He held the lead for the best part of five laps. But as we come over the finish line, it'll be Philippines' Gav Kintos who enjoys the victory. Henry Coe for Singapore, P2. Francis Angelo Gonzalez will get the better of Adam Amir for P3. Kent Lau came from nowhere to pick up P5 for Malaysia, ahead of Zuriel Sumadabilia. Axel Nukom in P8, but Gav Kintos, Alex Young, a very, very good performance, and he delivered it perfectly with one lap to go when he took the lead for the first time. Yeah, well done, Quintos. Really, really good. We, we call him bad boy, but we know how quick he is. That was a really well-constructed race. He took his time, he took his moments perfectly, didn't get involved in too much argy-bargy, hit the front, um, hunted down Henry Coe, and, and made a great overtake in the end. So there is a, a Francis Angelo Gonzalez who was in there. Can we uh, have a look also to see if Axel is smiling? Axel's got so many fans on Facebook. Uh, the little fella finished in P8, did Axel. Let's just see if we can get a reaction. Oh, this, there he is. There he is. Put him back up. Oh, look, he's describing to his parents what's been happening. Um, we, get, we get a lot of that after the race. Um, drivers who feel they've been um, um, wronged will send in videos. Um, the great thing about this sort of online racing is um, 
we don't have to see everything. We don't need millions of cameras. What the drivers do is they'll go back and review their race and they'll take the right clips out and send it to stewards and then we'll review it after that. Myla Olivia says, congratulations, Gav Kintos. Mary Nabo says, congratulations, Philippines. I think everybody, Alex Young, has got to say congratulations to Gav Kintos, who has taken the victory, but also recovering superbly to pick up six Zorio Summer de Bilia. And Adrian Ferguson picking up the fastest lap. That went unseen. Apologies to Adrian, the Singaporean. Really did put in a terrific fast lap. 125.7, despite finishing down in 13th place. Yeah, really good lap there by Adrian. Um, Adrian's actually a very experienced carter from Singapore. Um, he's, he's won a reverse grid race with us in ERGP, um, but he shouldn't be that far back. Yeah, hopefully we'll see him up in, in the next round. Bronze belongs to the Philippines today. A one, two, three in race number one and a one and three in race number two. Summa de Bilia. Yeah. I asked you before whether you thought that he would uh, be competing for the championship. You said yes. I, I raised my eyebrow. My eyebrow is no longer raised. Yeah, really good job. Um, he didn't have, have it his own way, though. Uh, that reverse good race, he made a bit of a sloppy move on someone, had contact, went, lost quite a few positions. That contact uh, which happened about three-fifths of the way through the race. That could have easily put him out of the race. So he survived that. Um, I think he'll still go away from this round with the most points, um, which would put him back firmly in the championship hunt. Certainly will. So we've had two races so far on round two of the Global Edition E-Racing GP. We're on American circuits, this mid-Ohio circuit. Yeah. Alex, uh, I tell you what, it's producing some clean racing, but giving us plenty of incidents as well. It's a tough track. I can't emphasize how difficult this track is. Um, you know, as you practice and you get into the track and after a few days testing, you kind of go, OK, I've got it. But it's always when you first jump on these sort of tracks, you go, wow, this is tough. And it does take a while to get your mind around it. Um, we saw some very opportunistic overtakes. There were some corners there I didn't think you could overtake on, but we saw some of the bronze boys pulling off some good moves. I got a feeling silver and gold that are coming up later, they'll be looking at those moves and thinking they can do that too. Absolutely. Oh, thanks for those of you who are following on Facebook. Please keep those comments coming. It's great to get your interaction and we'll give you a shout out wherever we can. Do stay on board. As Alex said, we've got silver and gold still to come. Silver at three, gold at, at 4.05. You are watching eRacing GP. <laughs>